Achieving a planche, front lever, handstand push-up, one arm chin-up is certainly on the top of many people's lists. And for good reason, they're impressive combinations of strength and skill, ultimately mastery of your body. These make up four out of my big five when it comes to body weight strength movements. And that's because they're gonna give you the best results when it comes to your training. But getting there isn't always as straightforward. In this video, I want to outline some strength levels that I think is worth hitting from beginner to advanced so you know each step of the way towards these end goals. Let's jump into it. An important point to start with is that strength is highly individual. These genetic and anatomical factors such as body proportions, muscle fiber composition, neural drive, muscle attachments are all going to affect each of our individual abilities to gain and develop strength. Myself being six foot three, 90 kilos, with arms as long as an orangutan, probably not the best setup, as opposed to a standard Olympic gymnast who's about five six and weighs 60 kilos. There's a big disparity here in terms of developing straight when it comes to body weight. Excuses aside, I've seen people knock out eight plus chin ups without ever training, and I've seen people struggle to get their first chin up after six or even more months of practice. It's important to understand yourself to make the best progress going forwards. So let's jump into the levels that I've got here. So first up, we've got basic. And when I say basic, I don't mean beginner. I mean the basic level of strength that I think everyone should be working to get towards. Very simply, these are being able to perform six parallel bar dips and six chin-ups, as well as eight reps of a side external rotation at 7% of your body weight. Now the dip and the chin up are really the bread and butter of these basic calisthenics. And if you have these numbers, you're gonna have the basic levels of strength in the larger muscle groups, the chest, the back, bicep, triceps, etc., to get on and actually be able to perform most, both within and outside of bodyweight training. The external rotation here is added as a measure of structural balance, but also as a protective measure as we go further down into more skill sort of training. This recommendation is made regardless of sex. I would say that if you are a female athlete, you could perhaps drop the chin up number to four if you weren't so fussed on developing absolute strength but I think six is very achievable for many people. It just might take some people longer to get there than others. As I mentioned at the beginning, if you don't have these numbers, I think it is most productive your time spent working towards them before we work towards other things. Doesn't mean we can't train anything else, but these are important milestones to hit. In terms of next steps, if you're at this particular level, I would say you just wanna focus on getting strong in dip and chin, maybe some overhead pressing as well, as well as your external rotation, just to balance things out and you're gonna have some good progress regardless. In this instance, I personally like full body splits and a focus on frequency, training two to three times per week with the intention on building up total amount of reps with these movements. Next up, we have basic plus. You could call this intermediate, but really it's an extension of that first level as you continue to build general strength in bodyweight training. And that is 12 plus dips, 12 chin-ups, 10 pike push-ups with feet on the floor, and 11% of body weight on that side external rotation. More reps here wouldn't hurt, but these are some good numbers to hit. This is the stage that I would aim to hit before I would start seriously looking at developing skills such as the planche front lever, handstand push-up, and one arm chin-up. I haven't got too much more to add here because this is essentially development of level one. Just understand that it's really, really important to build a base. I cannot emphasize that enough. I've made that mistake myself, I'm just passing it on what I've learned going to go on to the next level which I'll be honest there is a slight jump so here's some things that you could work on between basic plus and intermediate I would look at progressing towards a chest wall handstand push-up you can start with partial reps here continuing to develop the chin up by adding load is also a great idea I would begin working on some straight arm skills so pl tuck planche tuck front lever I have beginner routines for both of these on the channel so I'll link to those in the description down below in fact in the description is going to be a shed load of links to information, whether that's tutorials, to kind of help you piece things together and find the right thing at the right time for you. There is also my app, which has a program of fundamentals to get you to that basic level, as well as programs for every stage on from this. Whilst you could continue with full body routines here, I think an upper lower split generally works well for a lot of people when you have to develop slightly more higher intensity movements. That's gonna be a great option and prepare you for the intermediate level. And that very simply is gonna be five reps of a chest to wall headstand push-up, five reps of a chin-up with 40% body weight additional load, a tuck planche press, 
and a straddle front lever. This is where I said that there's a little bit of a jump. When we're at this level, there will be some variance with skills that come again down to that individual aspect of strength. Some people are gonna progress better with straight arm stuff, some bent arm stuff. Generally speaking, most people will hit that handstand push up, that chin up mark before they hit the straight arm stuff. But again, that's not the rule for everyone. If I was prioritizing, as I mentioned in my video of the big five bodyweight movements, I would focus on developing bent arm strength before straight arm strength, but certainly you can work on both of these at the same time here. In terms of things to work on at this level, progressing to the next one, I would continue to work on the handstand push up. Here, I would introduce more range of motion. So where we use partials before to build up range, we now want to increase that range. So elevating the hands is a great option to make this harder, as well as incorporating in some freestanding work to understand how to balance and apply force within the handstand push up. I would also shift the pulling work to more one arm focus. Certainly if you want to achieve the one arm chin up, this might include mantle chin ups or one arm chin up negatives, as well as archer pull ups and archer rows. Just a quick note with this one, don't jump in at the deep end too quickly with one arm pulling. It's a great recipe for tendonitis. Then really continue to build up straight arm strength. Ideally here, I think dynamic movements are your best friend. So that is continuing with the tuck planche press. This is also equal to the stolder press and front lever pulls. In terms of setting up your training at this stage, it depends on your own personal preference. An upper body lower split still works incredibly well, but I'd also consider looking at straight arm and bent arm splits, especially for those who want to focus more on developing the planche and the front lever. Use some overload methods such as bands to help work more extended positions, and that's gonna help you with this jump towards the more final stages. And that very simply is 90 degree push up, one arm chin up, straddle planche, and full front lever. Right, so this is the end, but also really just the beginning. If you can perform one of these movements, you have a high level of strength, but if you can perform all four at the same time, well, that's just pretty damn impressive. The reason I say this is only just the beginning is that for me, when I started getting into calisthenics oh, about eight years ago, these movements really were the top tier. People like Dominic Sky putting out some of his montage sort of videos, Dan Vadnall, these guys were like the top level of people. And to me, these movements were like the top level of movements. But now there's just some outrageous stuff going on on social media. The amount of stuff that I see and I'm like, I actually don't understand how that is possible with gravity. Arguably some of this is fueled by social media. People see amazing things and it inspires them to do more amazing things. And it generally is jaw dropping to see the level that people can get to. The reason I mentioned this is that these people who are performing this on social media often are gonna be that 1% of athletes. They are the very talented few. So this is not at all to take away from what they can do, but just understand that it's not possible for everyone, including us mere mortals. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't reach high and aim for those lofty goals. It's just important to understand this in the context of your own training journey. I've been training now for almost a decade. I'm currently somewhere between that intermediate and advanced spectrum. I've had all of the advanced movements at some point in the past, but currently, I certainly don't have all four of them. But hopefully this does give you some sort of focus in terms of what to aim for. As I said, I've kind of put a lot of detail in the description down below and there should be an upcoming blog post which is gonna kind of put this into writing so you can kind of trace through and find maybe where you should be working towards what you should be working on and hopefully a video or program or something to fill that gap and give you the information to get going. The point of this video is to avoid that paralysis by analysis. The original big five bodyweight video that I made I think it was super helpful, kind of gave some people some help in terms of what to train, but there's a massive gap between the two and sometimes you need to find what stage you're at and what's best to be working on. If this one did help you out, then please hit that thumbs up button and support the channel. I'd highly appreciate it. Right next to it is that subscribe button. If you wanna join the Bodyweight Warrior Tribe, don't miss out on any more future videos. There may be one for flexibility in this exact same format coming soon. But other than that, I'll catch the next one. Have a strong week and peace.